If this was not caught on live TV, I wouldn't believe you. Check out this presenter's reaction to the famous prankster, Mizzy. Do you think you've encouraged that kind of behaviour? And he's not answering the question. Do you I think mean, you've I, don't, I don't understand this whole... Do you want to be no, like... Hey, 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 no, hang on a second, hang on a second. You can do that to me, you're not doing it to a guest. You stowed another guest again, and I'm going to personally remove you. I, I'm not taking the mick. I'm not taking the mick. You do that, I'll drag you out by the hair, and you can be as hard as you pretend you are. You can be as hard as you pretend you are. You apologise to her right now, or you're you leaving. I respect you, but I'm done here. Good, good riddance to bad rubbish. We never should have had him on the show. I didn't even want him here. Get off! It's get absolutely off. disgusting. Get and him out of here! Security! Get, get him out! Get, Get the security from downstairs and get rid of him! Get, get rid of him! Do you know what? He's... Get oh, rid of him! Oh, 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 he's angry! I think you'll probably remember this heated exchange. You said to me that we were with those guys. No, said, because this not. happened in 2004, you, pal, you, so you, we're not going back said, that far. You, you, you know, if you're not going to let me talk, I'm out the door. You've been talking the whole time. All you do is yell over people, and you don't want to address point by point. Uh, you, you did it to me. You said I don't believe in the Constitution. Bye, guys. I guess. Governor. You always just sulk and walk away. Why? You're bigger than me and stronger than me. So what? You want to beat me up? Go ahead. I am not going to fight a guy like you. I, that means nothing to me. I argued with you. You put words in my mouth and you didn't like what I did it to you. You put words in my mouth saying, I didn't believe in the Constitution. CNN was not prepared for Joan Rivers to stop the interview like this. You know, I'm going. I really am going because all you have done is negative. No. All you have done is negative. I haven't heard that. I made people laugh for 50 years. I am put on earth to make people laugh. My book is funny. Stop it with, and you do this, and you're mean, and you're that. You are not the one to interview a person who does humor. Sorry. Are we serious? But that is not the only time that CNN pushed their guest to walk. I do have to ask you, there's this new headline on the Daily Beast saying that your company's in trouble, that you were trying to find a buyer. Is this related to the point no. about people not talking to each other? That if you want to create that media company, there's not interest? What's, what's going on with that? Wow. Brian, thanks a lot. I think that's the most ridiculous um, question I've ever heard. You want to play those games? Have a nice day. What game did I just play? Watch Clive Anderson's face as he accidentally offends the entire Bee Gees group. Do you feel, oh, I don't need those other two, I can knock out something like <laughs> well, that. There was a lot of ego problems at the time, yeah. and um, I, don't, I can't even remember well, we why. We at the same time called Don't Forget to Remember, which was yeah. interesting. I've, I've forgotten that one. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. We're getting yeah. on like a storm, aren't we, Clive? Yes. <laughs> In fact, I might just leave. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've never had anyone walk out before, but uh, well, well, yeah. we are. Pal. <laughs> so anyway. Night, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> this is a setup. Oh, well, I guess I'd better join oh. you. <laughs> well, well, you can stay and uh, just Well, I'd love to, but I don't do impressions. <laughs> yes. Moments after this happened, Ben Shapiro regretted his decision to leave. And I asked you a question, you failed to answer a single one of mine. Frankly, I find this whole thing a waste of time. If you want to read the book and critique the book, why don't you read and critique the book? If you want to read, if you want to critique me, you can think whatever you want of me. Why don't you Frankly, just try and I don't answer. care. But my point is, your book claims that society... Well, it would society, be nice if you would quote it from time to time. Your book is... Well, actually, I've done so several times, and I'm about to do so again, if you would let me just finish the question. Your book no, frankly, claims I don't think that society you know what? Honestly, is turning honestly, its back sir? on Judeo-Christian values. Yeah, this is, what are those values? What, considering what, what are the values it's turning its back on? I, I, you know, I, I'm not inclined to continue an interview with a person as badly motivated as you as an interviewer. So I think we're done here. I appreciate your time. So All thank right. You well, so much. thank you for your time and uh, for showing that anger is not part of American political discourse. Now, Mr. Shapiro. Everything was going honky dory in this interview until the talk show host decided to bring up Kodak Black's case. You seem upset that I brought it up. Uh -oh. Talk about something else. Well, I was saying, I, I think we I don't th have to talk about nothing else. We could be done right here. All right, I'm gone. Say less. I don't know. I don't, people don't tell me what to talk about on my show. Francis Atwali loses it when he claims that the interviewer is not taking him seriously. Take me seriously. And I've said it here and now, and I want to repeat it before you. William Samuel Ruto is not going to win elections. <laughs> Why are you walking away? He said he won't win. He's not going to win elections. 
as pop. Take it from me. But if you thought that those interviews were wild, wait until you see Donald Trump's vintage interview back in 2003. But first, allow me to take a rather unexpected diversion. You see, we can fill our minds with trashy videos, with juicy drama any day of the week. But do we ever ask ourselves really serious questions? I mean, do we ever ask ourselves this deep question of why do people walk away in life? Why does a man who's been married for 14 years leave his marriage and his three children to run off with another person. Why does a person who has so much potential leave their career and their life goals just to pursue a life of partying? And above all, the most important question is this. Why are there droves and droves of people walking away from God right now? You don't need me to provide evidence that proves that here in the West, we have never seen a more rapid decline of Christianity. But why is that? Why is it that in countries like Iran, Nigeria, and even China, there are literally hundreds of millions of people rushing to the Lord Jesus Christ. But here in the UK, you'll be hard pressed to go into a town centre and find five people who say that they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And friends, I'm certainly not the authority to speak on this subject, but personally, I believe there are three reasons why people are walking away from Christianity. The first one is science, the second one is sin, and the third one is security. Okay, number one, science. Now, I know you'll probably disagree with me on this one, but there was a time where I actually was tempted to become an atheist, and I listened to debate after debate, and do you know what I found? I discovered that there was a rational answer to every single question that the atheist asks. And again, I know exactly what you're thinking. Some of you will be saying to me right now, atheism has nothing to do with science. Science is knowledge, and atheism is just the choice to not believe in a god. And you're right, and yet, to this day I have never met an atheist that once you start to unravel the layers and you ask them why is it you don't believe in God, they build their foundation on science. And I actually think that a lot of these questions are actually just a mask to the real issue. The real reason you reject God leads us to number two sin. I'm going to choose my words very carefully now, but suppose that you are some kind of notorious criminal and you need to run some huge operations from your house. Do you then buy a property next to the chief detective of your city? No. Why? Because you're going to get caught. And so it's rather convenient for us to say if we love our sin, well then the detective does not exist. If we're going to continue to break God's laws, it's rather easy for us to say, okay, there is no God, and then I do not have to worry about the repercussions that might happen to me if I break those laws. And you know as well as I do, it doesn't matter how many times I say gravity doesn't exist. If I throw my hammer up into the air, it is not going to end well. And likewise, you can keep on saying God is not real, but it does not change the reality that he's a very real person, and one day you will meet him. People often ask me, was I raised in a Christian home? And the answer is yes. And even in my little brief stint on earth, I have seen a huge proportion of people walking away from Christianity. But do you know what is the uncanny motive behind all of these walkouts? Nearly all of them have walked away from Jesus because they wanted a relationship with a non-Christian. Very few people are willing to be obedient to God's commands and save themselves for marriage. And when the hormones a pumping and when they meet someone who doesn't even care about God they soon choose their girlfriend over their God or they'd rather a boyfriend than to be a believer and slowly all of the groundwork which has been laid by Christian parents by your church by your pastor is destroyed overnight and that person who starts to run away from God gets confused until they ask themselves the question what do I believe anymore are you still listening to me because I promise you I've not forgotten about the Donald Trump Trump interview. But first, this is way more important. You see, many of you who are watching this video right now, you have zero Christian influence on your life. So why is it that sin is also causing you to walk away from your creator? The Bible says, yet they say to God, depart from us, for we do not desire the knowledge of your ways. Who is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit do we have? if we pray to him. Oh my dear friend, know this. 
complacency will drag you down to hell. You can stubbornly reject the almighty creator God for all of your life, but know this, that ruin is around the corner. For all of your life, you can live happy and content without your creator, but there will come a day when you will eventually step into eternity. And when you step into eternity, the one thought that will consume you throughout all of those many years, you're there forever, is this. You will constantly remind yourself, why did I think that I could fix myself? Why did I think I was okay without God? Why did I reject the Lord Jesus Christ, the only one who can truly fix me? Am I talking to you right now? Well, perhaps the third reason, security, is the reason why you've walked away from God. And no, I'm not talking about financial security or to be wealthy or prosperous, even though the scripture does warn us about this. It says, but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare. So you better be real careful if one of your goals is to become a millionaire. Because so many times I've heard people say, when I get rich, I will give my big pile all to the Lord. But when that happens, so often many of these people who said they would give so generously to the poor and to the Lord's work, once they get that big pile of money, they keep so much for themselves. Okay, yes, they do give a lot more than the average person, but when you look at their bank accounts and you see their surmounted wealth, in reality, they're only giving God the scraps. But how dare you, Joe, say that? You have no idea how much that person gives. You have no clue about how much they give to the Lord's work. And you're right. And perhaps I've taken this point far too far. But there's one thing I am sure of, and it's this. It doesn't take a genius to look at these people's lives and to see the palaces they live in, to see the multiple sports cars that they drive, to see the vacations they go on and the yachts that they buy. And no, I am not saying we cannot have nice things and enjoy the life that God has given us. What I am saying is this, the true marks of a Christian are sacrifice and to build their treasures in heaven. And I just want to ask these people who are wealthy, who might be listening to me right now, are you building your treasures on earth or with Christ's kingdom instead? So, come on, talk to me. You can go to another preacher and I'm sure they will give you the answers you want to hear. But perhaps wealth is not your issue. Every single one of us has an idol though. There is an idol which is living on the throne of your heart and that throne only belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm asking you right now, whoever you are, wherever you're watching this from, right now as Christ takes his finger and puts it on an area of your life and he says, give that thing to me, give it up and remove it from your life and repent. I want to know, are you willing to do this? No one can answer that question except for you and the Lord Jesus Christ. Only you two know what the thing is that God wants you to leave behind. And so I want to know, are you willing to do it? Right now, repent, turn away from it and seek after the pearl of great price. Because Jesus did say to follow him would cost us greatly. Jesus did say there would be a life of sacrifice if we live for him. And some of us, if we're honest with ourselves, aren't willing to pay that price. Okay, what is the security that I was talking about? Well, it's security from the people of the world. I know this sounds cringy, but you know how people say, oh, I went through a midlife crisis. Well, I actually believe that I went through a quarter life crisis. And yes, I can hear you laughing right now, but believe it or not, at the ages of 25 and 26, I became very disillusioned with Christianity. And I looked at the unbelievers around me and I thought that they had it easier. As Psalm 73 says, for I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no pangs in their death, but their strength is firm. My problem was, I would go on social media and I would see my school friends who were now in their 20s. And here they were in Australia, partying, traveling, living a wonderful life that it seemed, an exciting life. And I was going to church every week and getting headaches with Christians falling out and having arguments over very silly things. May I go deeper now? Very often I hear people say, I left Christianity because church is just full of hypocrites. Christians, if they have the Holy Spirit inside of them, why is it they all hate each other and hurt each other? And some Christians even today say, I will not go in a church because it is full of fakes and liars. If that's you, I want to ask you a question. What would you think of a very poorly man who needs Needs medical help, but he says, 
I don't want to go to hospital because it's full of ill people. Where well, you'd say, come on buddy, join the club, you're ill and so are they. And so it is with the church. You see, never forget this one fact. Christ did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You see, you're a hypocrite and so am I. And that is why we all need Jesus. And remember this, just because you've had one bad meal doesn't mean you'll never eat again. Doesn't mean you'll reject food altogether. And likewise, just because you've had one bad church experience, don't throw church away altogether. And yes, I know that going to church does not make you into a Christian any more than entering a garage turns you into a car. But the reality is God commands us all. He tells us in his word that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as a fellowship, as a body together, worshipping, breaking bread, being together, having communion with other believers. And yes, if you go to a church, will you agree with everything that the preacher says? Probably not. Will you get along with everyone in the church? It's very unlikely. And will people in that congregation hurt you? Definitely. But that does not change the fact that God asks us to meet with a local fellowship. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I know that there are people listening to me right now who have serious health conditions, and that means you cannot leave the house. And likewise, there are people who basically you live in the wilderness. There is no church within your location that you can visit or you can attend. But that is not the kind of person I'm talking to. I'm talking to those of us who have willfully decided to isolate ourselves from other believers. You see, that is Satan's goal. Satan wants to isolate us because he knows that a divided army is a weak army and there is nothing more dangerous, there is nothing that is more of a drawback to Satan's kingdom than when there is a bunch of believers, broken people who come together and say, yes, we're messy, yes, we're sinners, but we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And here we are trying to be a light in this city, a witness to the world that Jesus Christ saves sinners. And I'm telling you, when a people get together and do that, that is dangerous, that is terrifying to the devil and he wants to do everything he can to stop it. So what am I trying to say? Ultimately, I will let you down. Joe Kirby will fail you. You will fail me. We'll all make a mess, but we just need to love each other and have patience like the Lord God has patience with me after I've failed him a million times over and yet he still opens his arms of forgiveness and says, I've still forgiven you, Joe. I still love you. And so let us show that same grace to other believers around us. But hey now, it's time for me to draw in the net. Where are you on this list? Are you the man or the woman who believes that science has disproven God? Are you the man or the woman who has a sin that you just think is too precious? You love this world so much that you cannot turn away from it and you put all of your treasures in it? Or are you the type of man or woman who actually you just think church is full of hypocrites and fakes so you want nothing to do with it? Well, wherever you are on that list, whatever the reason is why you are walking away from the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you know this, and this is terrifying, that Jesus Christ one day might actually let you walk away from him? Jesus once said, Oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I wanted to gather you under my wings like a hen gathers its chicks, but you were not willing. You see, you and I have a free will. We have a will which can choose to love God or choose to reject God. And many people sadly choose the latter. You see, God will not force himself upon you. For love to be true love, it has to be totally free. I want my wife to love me because she's chosen to love me, not because I forced her or coerced her. I want that love to be free and out of her own will. And likewise, God wants you to love him. And if you choose not to, he will let you walk. I mean, what goes through your mind when you consider all of these facts? When you consider the great love, the extravagant love that Jesus Christ had for you when there he died on that cross, the most excruciating death? What does it do to you when you consider the nails through his hands and his feet, the crown of thorns, the shame, the fact that he was dying in front of his own mother? His mother had to watch him go through that agony. What does it do to you when you consider the darkness of the cross, the black 
blackness that fell on the land as Jesus Christ suffered, endured the wrath of God as all of our sins was put on his body and God crushed Christ there so you could be forgiven. What goes through your mind when you consider they took that dead body and they put it in a tomb? He was buried, but on the third day, he rose from the dead. Again, in love, he did that because he wanted to give you eternal life because he was proving that no, death could not hold him down. There was a power in him that no darkness could ever quell. What goes through your mind when you consider the fact that Jesus Christ right now is ascended on high in heaven and he prepares a place for all of his children, for all those who have put their faith in him. Oh, friends. Do not walk away from God one more day. Do not turn your back on him for a day longer, but turn to him in faith and let him come to you and give you eternal life. But there is something beautiful you do need to remember. Although, yes, God will let us walk away from him. The day you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible puts a promise and it lays it very firmly. It's set in stone. And this promise goes like this. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So the day you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, he promises he'll never leave us. He'll remain with us. Though I've made a million mistakes in my life, though I've done so many shameful sins. The Bible says that he will remain faithful even though I'm faithless. And that is the God that we serve, a patient God, a loving God. And I just cannot understand why anyone who could hear this message would not want that for themselves. But then I have to remember those three reasons. And very often people choose darkness over light. Don't be that man. Don't be that woman. You come to him right now. Turn from your sins and put your faith in Jesus Christ right now. Okay, I'm not stupid. I know that some of you have only stuck around because you want to see the most unusual interview in history. This is the time when Ali G sat down with Donald Trump. Are you ready for it? Because this is our final walkout. And how does I call you like? You can call me Donald. For real. It's Trump, innit? Right. And remember at the beginning, what are you doing? TR. It's up there, innit? I've got some business idea that I just want to tell you about, and I'll be a fool if... Very quickly. What is the most popular thing in the world? Music. No. Tell me. Ice cream. Okay. Everyone has it. And what is the problem with ice cream? I have no idea. It drips. Okay. So me idea is what? To make a drip-proof ice cream. No. Well, my idea is to come out with just like these ice cream gloves that make the ice cream not go on your hands and make it all well sticky. And also keep your hands warm okay. when, when you is eating the ice cream. Okay. Is you in or is you in? Okay, well, it sounds like a good idea and I hope you make a lot of money. Good luck, folks. It's been nice seeing you. You take care of yourself, okay? Well, is you going to be in on that? Well, it sounds like an interesting We've got that like, P. Diddy is going to be in it. Good. Kodak Black, who you met in the video earlier, actually prayed to Jesus Christ at a petrol station. Have you seen this video before? 